Hi, welcome to AmiPal. Today we're going to be taking apart that power tower in the background. Um, yeah, this could be fun. Okay, so here's the case. I've already taken the screws out of the back, so we'll just lift off the cover like that. And there it is in its entirety. You see the uh, tangle of cables in there. Got to get all those unplugged and everything moved. Let's just assess where to start. First things first, let's unscrew some of the brackets here. That's for the Voodoo 3. And then the one just underneath it is for the SD card adapter. And then as with uh, every point of this, where I make a change, I document it. So now that card can come free. It's just a bit of movement on the mediator behind it there. And put that somewhere safe. And then we'll just remove the SD card adapter. Next thing, the CD-ROM drive. We'll just unplug the power connector there. We've also got the uh, the cable off. I'm just marking down here what the cable's for, because obviously once it's all unplugged, I won't know what goes where. Another documentation there. We'll just get the cables off the SD card adapter as well. And that goes somewhere safe too. Next up, untangle the mess of cables. So we'll unplug a few more of these cables here. Power. There we go, we'll, we'll try and get those out of the way a bit. It's really difficult where to think to start next. Okay, so I think that's the floppy cable off. Now I'll start working on the IDE device, device cables. For the, uh, the zip and the hard disk that are in there. I don't even think they're plugged into the Fast88 at this point. Just mark on here that this is the floppy cable. Not that I'll be able to plug it into an ID port, I think. I'll just scroll down on the other ID cables exactly which devices they're attached to. Should ease confusion. I think that's the final cable out there. Okay. So all the devices are clear now. Right. Next step, let's remove this vital piece of electronics, the Blizzard PowerPC. That's the accelerator board. See it's a bit tight there between the uh, devices and the power supply, so you kind of have to weave it through. There she is. A beauty. We'll go into a bit more detail on that later, but uh, it's safely off the motherboard and out of the tower for now. Now we focus on the mediator bus board. This provides the PCI slots for the Voodoo 3 graphics cards and anything else I want to put in there. Um, it's actually held off of the motherboard by a uh, like a screw extension that's about an inch in length. Uh, so it gives it adequate leeway to um, be mounted above the fast ATA IDE interface, which sits flush on top of the motherboard. Um, it also gives a bit of space for the keyboard adapter, but um, we'll see that in a minute. 
taking a photo there of the power cables and how they're attached, um, they have to go in the specific order that they're attached. And just gently lever it off. There we go. And take all the cables with it. <laughs> dust off of it. I think they're marked as P8 and P9. They just unclip. They're just a bit fiddly. You could, you can see there where um, the accelerator plugs in and then how it plugs into the 1200 itself. You can also see another extension on there, that little white plastic tab. Okay, where next? There's the uh, keyboard adapter. Again, we'll focus on that a bit more later on. Just checking it out for now. Right, silica gel pack. It keeps everything dry in there and tries to limit the rust that builds up. So it is a steel case. Okay, I've taken the last screw off of the back plate here and we're going to remove the motherboard from the tower case. There it goes. Now it's still attached, you can see, um, by some cables. Just going to take the floppy cable off there, just a gentle wiggle. And that's a, another cable for um, from the power fly to the, the case. Uh, this one up here, I believe, provides um, lights. Uh, an activity to the front of the case and it's free. Right, let's go into some more detail on this. So now we've got the motherboard out of the tower case. Uh, you can see it's mounted on a a back plane to, uh, that screws in. It's a very good way of doing it. It keeps it nice and uh, rigid. Um, now I just need to take it off there. You can see the um, fast ATA here, the, the power flyer, um, which has the kickstart ROMs slotted into it. Um, I'll try to turn it around for you. You can see here where it actually slots into the, the ROM sockets and it's actually sat just above the chip RAM there. So it skewers those. So that's the one for the SD card. Oh, it does not make good noise. There we go, see it in a bit more detail now. You can see where it sits on top of Gale. Um, it's got some pins at the bottom, they go through to um, the reset switch, which is a helpful function. Um, you can also see this trailing cable here, it sits on one of the pins on the motherboard IDE header. Um, and that is so that you get drive activity. That's the LED that flashes for hard disk activity. So it's a very handy thing. Um, you can see it kind of obscures the clock port a bit. So you need uh, only the partial clock port rather than the full one. Um, but yeah, it does fit very tight onto the motherboard there. You can see it's also got a, a 44 pin header as well, but uh, we just use the 40 ones because then you get the full size cables. Right, let's get this off. And finally, she's free! You can see this, uh, this model of the A1200 motherboard has a uh, the trailing cable for the mouse cable, so uh, for the mouse port, so it's a bit shorter um, than the the standard 1200 motherboard. This is a Rev 1D4. Now I honestly thought I had a 2B in there because uh, 1D4s 
can be a bit finicky with expansion so I'm a bit surprised that that's in there actually. Um, there is a lot of dust in this. Uh, this, this tower of course has got active um, cooling so the, the fans are drawing air in all the time it's not like the desktop case where everything's passive um, so all, there's just so much dust I'll spend ages getting rid of that um, so this is going to be going off to Amiga kit um, to be recapped I'm just going to pop that off there so that it can go flat um, they are going to take the power flyer off me to actually do the cats because as as I've already said it, it sits right on top of one of the custom chips and I'm a bit I don't really want to try and take that off and, and damage the motherboard in the process it's all right coming off the the ROM sockets because they're designed for things to come in and out of but uh, not uh, not Gale is it Gale under there I think it is so that's it that's another motherboard off the recap and a uh, very dismantled power tower. <laughs> now I've shown you this before, this is the Blizzard PowerPC accelerator board for the Amiga 1200. Um, I've, I've had to actually remove the um, third party fan that I attached. Um, it goes on, on there, you can see the amount of, of uh, fluff from all the dust pulled in uh, that's built up. Um, I bought that from Maplin um, when that was still a shop um, and I think it fits like a 486 or something. So. Uh, it just provides some cooling for the 68040 processor under there, um, which you you can't see obviously because it's obscured. But you can see the, the pins on the bottom there. Um, then we've got this massive cooler here for the uh, the power PC itself. The power PC is about the size of my my little fingernail um, compared to that huge lump over there. It's a much more advanced piece of kit than the 68040, which is positively antiquated compared to it. Um, so on the underside there is a small fan and that basically, I think it pulls air through this cooler or um, pushes it through, I'm not really sure um, but it, it provides ad adequate cooling for the PowerPC chip I've never had anything uh, overheat for PowerPC um, then of course we've got a cell battery for the clock um, two SIM sockets so I've got a, um, a 32 meg SIM in there and a 64 meg SIM in there so we've got 96 meg of fast RAM overall I think there's 60 NS as well, so it provides some speed. You can kind of see the the clip here, and also a bit of it here for the um, for that heatsink on the other side. Uh, you might also be able to see. Not sure if you can you can see it, but there's just a little um, washer between this chip and this heatsink. Um, that was put in there because basically how hot that controller chip gets so it just provides a bit of cooling for that can't remember where I saw recommendation to do that uh, but I did it and uh, despite this being an incredibly expensive piece of kit um, this here this little expansion port here uh, is actually for fitting a B-Vision um, PowerPC um, I think it's Permedia 2 based graphics card um, which I did used to own, but then uh, I uh, I sold it for the Mediator and Voodoo 3. I thought that's probably the better way to go, because then it doesn't really matter what card you've got in there, you've still got that that graphics card. Um, but I think the, the only other expansion that goes on there is the G-Rex PCI, uh, but mother, uh, PCI um, bus board, uh, which can also function very similar to the Mediator. It's probably probably a bit quicker doing it like that but I, I know the mediator is a bit better supported than the G-Rex. So speeds of the processors on this. The 6040 is clocked at 25 megahertz and I think that puts it about three or four times faster than the equivalently clocked 68030 chip. Um, I do notice it to be faster than the 50 megahertz um, 60030 that's in my desktop case but not hugely so. Um, you tend to notice it when you're doing processor intensive stuff like um, ray tracing it re really made a difference there um, and uh, Alien Breed and such they, they run much better on on this 60040 than the 030 um, for instance you can actually play Doom on the 60040 um, while it, it's uh, though it is playable on the 60030 
it's not exactly a, a great experience particularly as you get through the get towards the later levels <sighs> God, I'm just going to have to pick all that out the 603E the 603E should I say I'm stuck on my 68 kegs here um, is clocked at 160 megahertz so this is basically the, the, the slowest power PC and the slowest 68k CPU that you can get for the Blizzard PPC family is the, the slowest card you can get but it's quite a bit faster than uh, than not having it. Right, I'm gonna put that in an anti-static bag and that can go in my kit. A couple more things which come along with the power tower. This is a, uh, a little uh, device that actually sits on the the power, the floppy power and the uh, LED output on the A1200 motherboard and that, that goes through to the um, front lights to provide um, well, power basically, uh, to show that the machine's on. Um, and then we've got this, which is the keyboard adapter. It's just a little, uh, well, it's quite a big pick chip, isn't it? But um, that slots into the A1200 keyboard um, slot and then just outputs at the back via an AT connector. So obviously this is a bit of an old connector, could probably do with updating to something a bit newer, but it works. One of the other things I plan to do is replace this uh, quite ancient AT power supply. Um, it works, it does. I haven't had any issues with power or sudden reboots or flashing lights or anything like that. But it is very old and I mean, oh, I don't know if you can see in there, it's absolutely chock full of dust and all the rest of it. I, I'm not a, an engineer, I'm not into electronics so I'm not going to open that up and, and risk uh, zapping myself. So. Um, I think that's due a change. It's a 200 watt model. Uh, I'm replacing it with one of these, a Corsair VS series 450 watt um, block. Uh, we'll see how that goes because it's an ATX, it's not an AT, so uh, it's uh, different connectors, um, different size. Um, I have seen other people actually swapping their. AT power supplies for ATX on their power towers. Um, someone actually used the, the VS400, which isn't available anymore. Um, so um, it should go in. Um, I just might need a bit of advice how to wire it all up because it's got different outputs. But we'll see. And that's it. The power tower has been, uh, well, not demolished, but kind of broken down into its constituent parts. Um, that motherboard, let's pick up this wonderful piece of gloriousness. Um, here she is. Uh, that's going to pop off to Amiga Kit, uh, put in a, a recap with them. Um, they're going to sort that out for me and send it back. When it comes back I can put it all back together and hopefully it will work because uh, <sighs> so much dust. Um, because uh, they, uh, we all know how um, Amigas can be when they've kind of been broken up into different pieces and put back together. Um, I will have to perform the blood sacrifice. So thanks for watching, um, like, subscribe, all that, uh, and uh, check in again for more sweet Amiga content. Cheers!